Here at the Learning Liaisons, we believe that your teacher certification exams don't define your ability to teach. And so, our number one priority is making sure that we help you clear up the confusion and avoid test anxiety so you can instead pass in your upcoming attempt. And as you know, some of the great perks of securing your full-time position are one, having a full-time salary, two, getting summers off, but three, and most importantly, helping these students, helping our kids succeed. I'm Anderson, Math Director of the Learning Liaisons, and we're excited that you're part of this 21-part video series. In this video series, we're going to cover each of the 21 skills on your general knowledge math subtest. That way you can go ahead and clear up that confusion. Two, reduce your anxiety. And three, pass in your upcoming attempt. Plain and simple. So these videos, they're short and sweet, between three and five minutes, give or take. But the point of them is to show you that you can do this. Because we understand that people are afraid of what they don't know. And math is no different. So regardless of why you feel that you're bad at math, whether it was your teacher in middle school or high school, or maybe you didn't try hard enough or whatever it was, that doesn't matter. Where you are is where you are, but it is your responsibility to move forward from here. And that's why I wanna personally help you in guiding you through this process and understanding each of your 21 skills. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so competency one. Number sense, concepts, and operations. Skill one, identify real numbers and compare their locations on the number line. So in this skill, in this first skill, what you can expect to see are three real main types of problems. The first type of problem that you'll see are identifying what the comparison is between two numbers. So essentially, you'll be given two numbers and a box in between, and you'll be asked to compare those two numbers. Whether it's they're equal, one's greater than the other, less than the other, or a fourth operator, which is either less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. And so there is a crazy tip and trick here for this type of problem, and it's absolutely insane. Check out this example for it. Which of the following symbols should be placed in the box to form a true statement? So with these types of problems, I would give yourself maybe a minute and 15 seconds, and then press play when you're ready. All right, so there's kind of an automatic way to get problems like this right. Um, and there's kind of like a flaw in the way that these kind of problems are written. Because you need to have four answers, they have to put four choices. And so think about it this way. If the answer, let's go ahead and say if the answer were A. If the answer were A, then D would also make sense because this little symbol right there means also equal to. So if it's A, it's also D, which doesn't make sense. And if our answer is B less than, well then again, D would also make sense. And remember, we can't have more than one answer here in the GK math, so A, B, and D are automatically wrong because picking one of them would mean another answer is also true. So here C is automatically the answer. But let's go ahead and prove it. Let's grab our calculators. So negative two over seven, you know, that'll be negative 0 0.28 and negative 4 over 9 is negative 0 0.44. So when you think about it, you know, which one's greater? Uh, owing 28 cents or owing 44 cents? Well, only owing 28 cents is better than owing 44 cents. So, oh, there it is. Just confirming the answer. And yeah, there's a little trick to this problem. You actually don't even need to look at the question itself. So I hope you see how crazy useful that little tip and trick is because you're gonna see at least one or two of those problems on exam day. So I just saved you at least a total of four minutes on that one type of question. Now let's go ahead and talk about the second type of question that you'll see in skill one. The second type is ordering numbers. So you'll be given four numbers and you'll either be asked to order them from least to greatest, greatest to least, or identify the second greatest number, second least number, identify some place in that list of numbers. And the third skill that you'll see here is going to be word problems. So it's the same thing, ordering numbers, but in the form of word problems. This could be comparing the grades that a student got. This could be comparing heights. Um, and the thing is, what you're gonna see is that not all the numbers are gonna be in the same form. So here's where some vocabulary comes in. You're not always gonna be given whole numbers or integers or natural numbers. You may be given rational numbers, you may be given decimals, you may be given percentages. And so it's really important that we understand the differences between those types of comparisons of numbers and 
how to translate between those types. If we can't do that, then this skill is going to be particularly difficult, although it is one of the most straightforward on this test. So again, just to make sure that we recap, make sure you understand the vocabulary for this skill. There's not a lot of critical thinking needing to be done in this skill, but more so you need to understand the procedure behind ordering numbers. And so because you do have a calculator on your test, this does make this very straightforward. But again, you want to understand the differences between whole numbers, natural numbers, rational numbers, percents, and decimals. That way, again, you can clear up the confusion and pass on this section. So once again, guys, I'm Anderson, the math director of the Learning Liaisons. We're happy that you could join us for this first video, and we can't wait to see you in the next one. We'll see you there.